Hi, this is Almiru Oosthuizen with Cape Town Emergency Medicine, assisted today by Emmanuel Ahiable, also of Cape Town Emergency Medicine. And this is part two in our two video series on anterior shoulder dislocation and relocation. In this video, I'll talk you through the principles of relocation of a shoulder that has been dislocated. There are many different techniques described to relocate a shoulder, and this reflects the fact that each dislocation is unique and each patient is unique and a technique that works in one may not work in another. It's therefore important that any clinician that potentially deals with this problem should be competent in more than one technique so that they can try more than one in a patient and vary their technique from patient to patient. Reduction techniques can be divided up into four groups. The first group is traction in the plane of the body. The second group is traction at 90 degrees to the body. The third group includes techniques that use external rotations as a base, and then there's a fourth group of unusual techniques that don't fit in anywhere easily. Let's first talk about traction counter-traction techniques with the arm in the plane of the body. Traction counter-traction techniques is simply pulling on the arm and hoping that the shoulder will pop back in. If I was to take this and just pull, Emmanuel would fall off the bed. But there has to be a way to provide counter-traction. The oldest technique described would be the Hippocratic technique, where counter-traction is provided by my foot. Take your shoe off, hold the arm in slight abduction, and put your foot in the axilla. It's very important not to blade your foot into the axilla or to place your heel in the axilla. Use the broad part of the blade of your foot and just place it on the axilla. You can now straighten your leg and just gently lean back, providing traction with your arm and counter-traction with your foot. Start with gentle pressure and slowly build the pressure over time, taking a pause whenever you feel muscle spasm in the shoulder, allowing that spasm to resolve before continuing your traction. Patience is the key here, allowing the soft tissue elements around the dislocation to relax and the shoulder to relocate. Another way to provide counter-traction would be with an assistant and a sheet. Take a simple sheet, loop it around the patient, and ask an assistant to provide counter-traction. The sheet provides the same function as your foot previously, and while your assistant pulls, you would do exactly the same, starting with gentle and then increasing traction, pausing when there is muscular spasm, and allowing the shoulder to relocate. Another group of techniques would be those techniques using external rotation of the upper arm as their basis. In its simplest form, leave the arm neutral to the body and flex the elbow to 90 degrees. Grip the hand as if you would arm wrestle the patient and support the elbow gently cupped in your hand. At this time, you would slowly and gently initially externally rotate the arm. As with the traction method, start with gentle pressure Increase your pressure as needed and pause if you feel muscular spasm in the shoulder and once it relaxes, moves on again. Many shoulders will reduce before you reach the maximum external rotation that the patient's joint will allow. However, if it does not, a phase 2 maneuver is appropriate. In one described technique, the phase 2 maneuver is maintaining the external rotation on the arm, move the arm up across the patient's head, this will often win you some extra space for external rotation and mostly the shoulder will reduce by the time you get up to the head. If however you have reached here and it still has not reduced, a phase 3 maneuver is appropriate. In this case, take the elbow across the face while maintaining external rotation and touch the opposite ear with the hand. If all three phases has failed, you can either reset with the same technique or preferably attempt a second technique. Another technique using external rotation as its base is cocker. I want to caution you that the cocker technique can cause a lot of force around the humeral neck and has been associated with fractures. So if you're going to attempt this, be very gentle and certainly do not attempt it in people with osteoporosis or elderly patients or patients with previous fractures in the upper arm. Like with the previous technique, start in the arm wrestling position and externally rotate. Once your phase one technique has failed, bring the elbow forward 
and across to the midline. This is the part that creates a lot of force, so please be careful here. If the shoulder does not relocate with the elbow approaching the midline of the patient, the phase 3 maneuver to use here would be to maintain external rotation and aid deduction while allowing the patient's hand to go to the opposite shoulder. If all three phases has failed to result in relocation, attempt a different technique. The third group of techniques we're going to talk about is traction at 90 degrees to the body. The first one that I'd like to demonstrate to you is the spasmo technique of reduction. In this technique, take the arm and very gently and slowly bring it up to 90 degrees. Once you have reached 90 degrees, you want to get yourself onto a footstool or a chair to increase your leverage. And now the patient's body and gravity will provide counter-traction while you provide traction towards the ceiling, gripping firmly onto the wrist. Again, start with gentle traction and upwards towards the ceiling, pausing if you feel muscle spasm catch and continue once that relaxes. If you have reached the point where you're starting to lift the patient's body off the bed, that's the maximum amount of traction that you can do. At this point, some external or internal rotation while maintaining ceiling work traction will often result in relocation. The second technique using traction at 90 degrees to the body is called Stimson. This is simply allowing the patient to lie right to the edge of the bed and for their arm to dangle over the edge of the bed in a relaxed manner. Gravity and the weight of the arm provides traction. This is an excellent technique to use in people with little muscle bulk, especially the elderly, or in patients where a facilitating strategy including systemic analgesia is not possible or feasible. The key to this technique is patience. You should get the patient comfortable and leave them as this can take quite a lot of time. Over time though, as the muscles relax, the shoulder will often relocate spontaneously. A variation of Stimson, called the modified Stimson, is when you would use skin traction or some other technique to attach weight to the hand or lower arm, half a kilogram or a kilogram, to increase the traction and speed the procedure up. A fourth group of techniques don't fall easily into any of the categories previously described, and I'll show you one or two examples from this group. The first technique is the handshake technique. Grip the patient's hand as if you would be shaking his hand, keep it initially in the plane of the body, and apply only very, very gentle traction. All you do now is have an oscillating up-down motion as if shaking the patient's hand, moving in towards the body and out in abduction. You would continue with this gentle moving, again as always, stopping or catching if there is muscle spasm, and you may increase or decrease the amplitude of your shape. With patience, gentle traction and persistence, the shoulder will often relocate. This is another technique that's really useful in patients where a facilitating strategy is not feasible or possible, and in patients with recurrent shoulder dislocation. Another unusual technique is the sequential massage technique. The principle here being that allowing only gravity traction on the arm, if we can accelerate relaxation of the muscles around the joint, spontaneous relocation often occurs. The key here is to have a patient who is comfortable and relaxed. Have them seated in a comfortable manner and hold their hand again as if you would be shaking their hand with the elbow next to the body and the arm flexed to about 90 degrees. It's a good idea to talk to the patient and distract them, maybe having them watching some TV or talking to a family member, anything really you want to take their mind of what's about to be happening. What you would now do is sequentially massage the trapezius, deltoid and biceps muscle with quite firm pressure, at about 10 seconds of massage per muscle. Moving on to the deltoid and then the biceps muscle. You would repeat cycles of triceps, deltoid and biceps massage over and over while distracting the patient and keeping them comfortable. As these muscles are massaged into relaxation, the patient is distracted and there's gentle gravity traction, you'll often find that the shoulder relocates. You could attempt gentle external rotation once the shoulder is nicely relaxed, but keep in mind that this may result in pain and may be counterproductive. The third unusual technique here is scapular manipulation. All the previous techniques aim to have a static glenoid 
and to manipulate the head of the humerus around and into the clenoid. With scapular manipulation, the head of the humerus is static and we manipulate the scapula and therefore the glenoid in an attempt to relocate it over the humerus. This technique can be used in isolation but is especially useful as an adjunct to other techniques, classically the Stimson or modified Stimson technique. Position the patient on the edge of the bed as with Stimson or modified Stimson. Identify the triangle shaped scapula and the inferior point of the scapula. You would grasp and stabilize the scapula as shown. Make sure you have good control of the tip. Once you have that, you would now rotate the scapula's tip towards the spine. And often that rotation of the tip of the scapula towards the spine will allow relocation of the glenoid over the humeral head. And that's it, an approach to shoulder relocation. Thank you very much.